Okay, since the last video, I've went ahead and drilled the rest of the holes. Got the holes drilled for the tube sockets with the holes drilled to hold the sockets down. We, looking at it more closely, pins four and five on the heaters need to point straight forward, which means these holes for the tube sockets need to be drilled in this direction, not at an angle. I also, I've got this drilled out. Here's the ground connection, which we'll talk about in a second. I got the hole for the power switch drilled. I got the hole for the volume control. And then the small hole here is where this pin on the volume control goes into the, um, to keep it from rotating. It fits in the chassis. And we want to orient it so the wires are facing, or the lugs are facing that way because we went ahead and drilled the RC sockets here on the side and they're going to be like this vertically so that the wires going over to the potentiometer are going to be super short which I think will help us avoid having to use shielded wire because we're only going about an inch or so over there. So they're going to sit they're going to sit in here like this on top of each other. Okay. The next thing we want to do is wire up the heater windings or heater wire, however you want to refer to it. And the reason I keep tripping up and saying windings is you want to do this with the heater wiring. And I use 18 gauge solid core wire. I put one in, I put one end into a drill chuck. And then I put the other side into a vise or a clamp or whatever you have that can hold this in. And then you pull on the drill while you hold this in and run the drill at slow speed. And it'll wind this up and create this twisted pair of wires that we're going to use for the heater wiring. You want to keep, again, you want to keep the heater wiring into this corner and into the corners here away from any of the signal tubes. And so here is the heater wiring that I've put, that I made up. As you can see, the heater, uh, the heater things I've bent over like this so that they can stay as low to the chassis as possible and as far away from the other signal wires as possible and then they will they'll go around the the front of the chassis over here to this little three tab connector and I'll go over how I wired this up in just a second the other key thing you want to do is make sure that you run, make these wires so that you can access this screw hole here for attaching them to the chassis. You don't want the wires going over the top of the screw head. Again, trust me, I learned the hard way on that. On this end, you see a couple of resistors. And what this is doing, it's called creating a virtual center tap for the heater wiring. What you do is you get some 100 ohm 2 watt resistors and you run it between each leg and ground. And this is going to be bolted to the chassis, but we're going to be wiring this uh, amplifier up with a star ground system and this is not going to be the main ground point. We're going to be running a ground wire from here over to wherever we create our star ground in a little bit. I've seen people kind of freaking out when you, they see you bolting a ground to the chassis and they think you're creating separate ground points. But we have to remember electricity always follows the path of least resistance. So as long as we're running a ground wire from these 
I would just say auxiliary ground points in the amplifier that as long as you're running a wire from them over to the star ground, that's the path the electricity is going to take because a copper wire that's soldered in place is going to be have less resistance than the chassis ground point will, especially when this is sitting on top of powder coating and probably not really making a good ground. So I'll show you how this fits in in just a moment. The next thing we need to do is wire up our power socket. One of the important things to do with this is you need to create a really strong ground point. And I'm trying to get the see if I can get the lighting. I think you can see this. Right here is a bolt where I've ground off the powder coating and bolted it separately from anything else. And I'm using the, the little washers that have a star washer made onto it. You bolt this down and then you make up a little lug with a, I use a green wire because that's kind of the universal wire color for ground, which will go, which will then bolt down to this lug and come over to the ground on the power socket. So that's going to be the next step we're going to do is bolt this thing in, put this ground lug in, get the ground lug bolted down. Then we're going to work on running some of this twisted wire, running some of this twisted wire over and around and up to the power switch that's going to come in the front here. Then the next thing we're going to do is go, we're going to mount the transformer and then we're going to put, you can, here's how my heater wiring sits in the amplifier. And as you can see, it's, it's tight in the corners and then it comes over to these two resistors and then the two filament leads will come out of this hole right over to here. So we're keeping this high current, low voltage filament heater windings, wire, whatever you want to call it, way away from anything else in the amplifier. And then we're going to put the fuse in, put the power to it, and make sure that both the heaters have the, both these heater pins have the right voltage, and then put the tubes in it and make sure the heaters light up. Once we have the heater wiring all done, then we can start working on the rest of the power supply. We'll get the power supply wired up and then check our B plus and see if our B plus is in spec. And then once we get the B plus, we can start then wiring up the output transformers and figuring out how we're going to wire up the signal part of the amplifier. So I'm going to stop right here, get the power stuff all wired up, and then I'll show you how we test the voltages and make sure that all the heater stuff's working correctly. I'll be back in a few minutes once I get all that done.